When friction and other heat losses are not negligible, the conservation of energy procedure is invalid. Thus, we turn to the work kinetic energy theorem, which could incidentally be used in any of the previous examples that we did with conservation of mechanical energy. The work kinetic energy theorem says that the net work done on an object is equal to its change in kinetic energy. If we flesh out the variables so that we can see a little more clearly what is involved with the work kinetic energy theorem, the net work is equal to the net force on the object multiplied by the distance through which that force acts, and the change in kinetic energy is kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial, so we can simplify that to be one-half m times the quantity vf squared minus vi squared. From rest, a 72 kilogram object is pulled on a level surface by a horizontal 238 newton force. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.28, okay, stop right there. As soon as we see the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.28, we know right away that we can't use conservation of mechanical energy, and instead we're going to likely need this work kinetic energy theorem. So I'm going to go ahead and put the equation out there right from the get-go, and then let's start all over again. From rest, ah, okay, that tells me that the initial speed is zero. A 72 kilogram object, so our mass changes to 72, is pulled on a level surface by a horizontal 238 newton force. Well, 238 newtons is the applied force, but it might not be the net force, so I'm not prepared to put 238 in for the net force yet. The coefficient of friction is 0.28, how far will the object have traveled? Okay, well that's this variable right here, d. So that's the one we're looking for. How far will the object have traveled by the time its speed reaches 5.0 meters per second? So 5.0 is the final speed. And of course we're going to have to square that according to the equation 5 squared. It looks like this is simply a matter of finding the net force. And once we find that, all the other variables except the distance are known and we should be able to calculate that distance. Let's draw a free body diagram for this case. We've got the mass, we've got a 238 Newton applied force. What are the other forces that act on this object? Well, we've got gravity, we've got a normal force, and these are numerically equal because there are no other up and down forces. If we take the mass, 72, times g, which is 9.81, we get this number here, 706.32 newtons. The friction force is going to oppose the motion of the object, and since we know the coefficient of kinetic friction, and we just figured out the normal force, we should be able to figure out the magnitude of that friction force. The coefficient of kinetic friction is right up here, 0.28 times the normal force of 706.32 gives us this number 197.77 newtons. Okay, so what's the net force? Well, this 706 is irrelevant because it's the weight down, but it's also the normal force up, so those cancel each other. So the net force is going to be 238 to the left minus 197.77 to the right, and that turns out to be 40.23, which means everything in this equation is known except d. Multiply the right side out, divide by 40.23, round to two significant figures, and you get 22 meters. Let's try another one. A 12 kilogram object slides horizontally on ice with an initial speed of 2.2 meters per second. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 .030, how far will the object slide? Again, because we have friction, conservation of energy is not an option, so let's fill in what we can with the work kinetic energy theorem. We're given the mass of the object. We're told that its initial speed is 2.2 meters per second. We have a coefficient of friction of 0.030, and the question is, how far will the object slide? 
So we're looking for D again. And implied in this is what the final speed is. And that's going to be zero. So again, it looks like we need to find the net force. And once we've done that, we should be able to calculate how far this object slides. So let's draw a free body diagram. This object is sliding to the right. It has a weight, a normal force, and friction acting on it. The weight and the normal force are equal. 12 times 9.81 is 117.72. The friction force, then, is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.030, times the normal force of 117.72. That gives us this tiny number, 3.53 newtons. So the net force is, in fact, 3.53 newtons, because the weight and the normal force are equal and opposite, so they cancel each other. Multiply by the distance. And it is very important here that we pop an extra negative sign in front of that. And that's because if you remember when we talked about work, if the net force and the displacement were in opposite senses, that would be negative work. So we need to mentally put in that negative sign. The right side of the equation boils down to that. We can see now that the negative signs end up canceling and the distance is 8.2 meters.